All right, I just arrived in Elkhart, Indiana for the first night. It smells really clean in here. This is a new hotel, True by Hilton Elkhart. It smells like, oh my God. Like it smells so fresh. It smells like um, fabric soft now, you know? That view, oh, stunning. I can see an above ground swimming pool that's not yet been filled. This is dreamy. Really nice. Little room, but clean. Only $80 a night, so. I'm just gonna be here en route. The toilet is green. Everything looks beautiful. <sighs> Super clean. Like I cannot, I cannot express enough how good it smells in here. This is flawless. Uh, uneventful drive um, and I'm just really ready I'm hoping the map is gonna come out soon I'm gonna have to look for it uh, but hopefully once I see the map I can know what I'm gonna be dealing with this weekend time to carbo load oh, noodles mac and cheese and a giant cookie because when I drive long distances I my heart rate is so high that I burn a ton of calories just sitting in my car and driving. So according to my Garmin, I burned 1,200 calories today. So I gotta get some of them back. The maps finally came out, like around 5.30 or 5.45 or something like that. But um, I just spent the last 30 minutes analyzing the maps and I actually wrote down all the obstacles and what courses they're on. And I even analyzed the obstacle density, um, basically how many obstacles there are per mile, um, which was a particular interest to me for the beast because it can be very, um, very uh, kind of empty out in the middle there um, when they have a lot of um, water on the course and they can't really stack obstacles in there. So basically the obstacle rundown um, and I'm just going to go through all of the obstacles and I'm going to specify if I come to a section where it's beast or super, or beast and super or beast only. So all the races will have over walls, six foot wall, monkey bars. And I'm so glad that they're doing monkey bars early because otherwise it'll just, I'll just be thinking about it. I hate it when it's at the end. A barbed wire crawl. And then it branches off beast and super do twister. Now that tells me it's probably going to be a two section twister if they're having the super do it as well. Cause that's kind of a, it seems like a harder obstacle to like dismantle a section of twister between beast mode and regular super mode. So it'll probably, I assume it'll be a super, I don't really know, but um, twister, uh, bender, seven foot wall, beater. I'm excited about that. Um, and stairway to Sparta. So I assume that will also be in super mode, which is extremely easy. Um, then we go to a section that's beast only. And these obstacles will probably be in a good, they're more likely to be in wet or muddy areas because that's, the beast course really takes you out into that far flung um, drowned uh, section of forest. So beast only. Tyra Traverse. Now this will be my first of the big three obstacles that I've been working on. Um, actually, I haven't been able to work on Tyro Traverse. All I've done is come up with a strategy. Um, so we'll see if that pays off. Um, <laughs> armor, sandbag carry, hurdles, Irish tables. I've never done Irish tables. That'll be a fun new experience. Eight foot wall and hurdles again. So we'll do another hurdles. Then farmer's carry, another obstacle I've never done in a race. Obviously, I have farmer's carried things in my past. I can farmer's carry 45 pound plates for as long as you need me to. So uh, this should not be a challenge. Um, then we go back to beast and super, um, starting at the 18th obstacle. The box. Try that stuff again. Pipe layer. Olympus. Right there at obstacle 20 is Olympus. Um, so halfway through, 
um, probably not mileage wise, it's near the end, uh, but <laughs> because of the obstacle density, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, but Olympus, I'm nervous, uh, but there aren't a lot of grip obstacles before that, so hopefully I'll be able to um, have some grip there. Sandbag carry. Now, this is the second sandbag carry for the Beast, but we're back in the section where all of the races are going to be doing these. So this will be all races are doing this sandbag carry. So two sandbag carries for the Beast. That's pretty cool. Um, so anyway, we're continuing with all races doing this. Um, Atlas carry. Multi-rig. And here we're coming into the finishing gauntlet. Now, this is like the last mile or so. And... Um, they, these are going to be on all of the races, and it's a ton of obstacles. Multi-rig. Uh, I still don't know what that's going to look like, and I'm still crossing my fingers that I'll be able to get it. Bucket carry, um, which, if it's at the end now, that's going to be a lot better than 2019 when they put it in this wooded mud fest. So, vertical cargo, hercoist, Z-walls, inverted wall. Rolling mud, dunk wall. Yeah, dunk walls are back. Mm. Slip wall. Now, I I do appreciate that they're doing rolling mud, dunk wall, slip wall. I love that combo. Um, it requires some strategy. It requires some technique, and I'm here for it. Helix. I've never gotten to do helix. I'm really excited to finally get to do helix. Rope climb, which I hope it won't be too muddy. But we'll see. It comes after the rolling mud and the slip wall. Uh, spear throw. Yeah. Um, I actually practiced throwing my spear in my backyard last night. And I threw 10 times from 30 feet away and hit it 9 times. And I felt friggin' amazing. Like, I was getting loft. I was accurate. I, was, I did not feel like I was straining my arm at all. So it was good. A-frame cargo and fire jump. So I'm really excited. Um, the, the obstacle density, particularly for the beast, is very, very low. You have obstacles one through four, then the mile one marker. Then you have one obstacle before the mile two marker. Then you have obstacles number six through nine. Then you have mile three. Then you have no obstacle before the mile four mark. Then you have one obstacle per mile until the mile 10 mark. And then you have two obstacles before mile 11. Three obstacles before mile 12. Three obstacles. No, four obstacles before mile 13. And then the last, like, 11 or 12 obstacles are in the last mile before mile 14. So, yeah. That's, um, as usual, a very backloaded course. Um, but it'll be interesting to go through all that water and kind of be able to save your hands and save your strength and not have to worry too much about that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm really excited about this. There's a lot of like heavy carries, um, a diverse uh, array of, of obstacles. Um, it, it just sounds like a really fun course. Steve Hammond has done a fine job in this one and, um, I'll just keep on looking at this information and prepare myself mentally and try to remember what order things come in so that I a little feel a little more prepared out there when I go out on Saturday. Good morning. It's Friday, the day that I drive from Indiana to Ohio. But first, I have a nice breakfast. Bow! Look at that. So balanced. Oh, mm. Greek yogurt. So I'm um, going to meet Wes for lunch at the Travel Plaza in, what is it? It's, it's nearest to Oberlin, so that ought to be fun. Um, but then we will continue a total of four hours of driving for me today, so less than yesterday. And it shouldn't be as stressful because I'm not driving through Chicago or near Chicago. So hooray, that'll be good. Here I am. My hotel, Hampton Inn in Streetsboro. I got the two room suite again. Lovely. And what I love about this two room suite, first of all, the bathroom is huge. I mean, it's just a huge bathroom. But secondly, 
I really like that the bathroom shares the wall with the hallway. And then if I close the bedroom door, the bedroom is like completely isolated from any hallway noise. So that's pretty awesome. So now I am going to go to Walmart and stock up on some uh, food related essentials. And then I will just relax, maybe have some dinner a bit later, carbo load and prepare myself mentally. Hello and welcome to Claire Snyder's Recovery Spa. Over here we will find healthy uh, refuel for between races and whenever I feel like it. Um, we've got cookies for the super. We've got cookies for the beast in the backpack already. Over here we'll find garbage bags that I will be using immediately to put my filthy clothes tomorrow after the race. Here, my wave tool for scraping my shins and whatever else needs scraping and lotion to use with it. Tennis ball for rolling my back out, a massage gun for who knows what. And the creme de la creme, the piece de resistance, my speed hound recovery system. All set up for me to squish my legs with an air-based massage. So I am super excited about tomorrow. But tonight I get to have spaghetti and meatballs and garlic bread from a local place, which is my favorite pre-race tradition. So... Hopefully it'll be delicious, um, and maybe I'll even have some leftovers for later tonight. Okay, you guys, Streetsboro is a magical place, because this is what $12, including tip and tax, gets you in Ohio for Italian food. This substantial portion of spaghetti and meatballs. And this big ass thing of garlic bread, which was at like a dollar sixty-five, and a salad with dressing. So yeah, I am gonna have the best dinner ever. Just a little dizzy, just gonna squeeze bottom, my feet, all the way up, flushes out all the lactate. I'm doing it now before the race, uh, but it'll be more effective tomorrow in between the races. It'll make me feel, hopefully, on Sunday like I have a brand new pair of legs. All right, it's Saturday morning. I'm all breakfasted up. They had these, um, breakfast sandwiches because um, breakfast is limited. So breakfast sandwich uh, that you microwave. It was really good. It was like a Jimmy Dean croissant, sausage, egg, cheese kind of thing. So um, it was really good. And now I'm just getting ready for my last minute stuff. Um, I'm actually going to do two layers of sunscreen, but the first one goes on first because it is going to be 90 degrees today, so I want to make dang sure that I like sunscreen every everything really well, multiple times, including stuff that might shift around, and bug spray, because it's really boggy, so I want to make sure I bug spray, but I'm feeling a little um, anxious, I guess, just because you know I've done I've done races in heat before, and Ohio is usually pretty hot. Um, Ohio's usually about eighty degrees, but this is like ninety degrees, and this is a full this is a beast. Um, I've never gone this far in this kind of heat for a Spartan event it's in this. Ugh, I don't know. It's going to be... I'm just a little anxious. I don't know what to expect. I think I should abandon hope of 
hitting any time goals. I think that my previous time goals, I was thinking, oh, wouldn't it be nice to go like under, um, you know, five hours or whatever. I think I should just completely forget about it. about any time goals and just let my time be whatever it is without um, without interference, uh, because otherwise I'm just going to get too in my head and too much pressure to stay on a certain track. So, um, trail toes. Got to lube things up. This, this is endurance sport here. So, I, uh, I, I'll see. I feel good. Like, my ankle hasn't, I haven't even noticed my ankle for the last few days. Um, so it shouldn't be a problem. And um, my muscles feel relaxed. I mean, I feel, I feel like my grip will be fine, uh, hopefully. I, I'm going to make sure because I have to carry the hydration backpack, obviously, for the beast. I might even carry it later, too, but um, I want to make sure that I lubricate where the straps will be. And then, of course, my feet get get really good. Um, because we're going to be walking through so much water today, that should actually play to my advantage. Um, because I feel like if my socks get soaked through with water, I'm actually less likely to get blisters. You know? I didn't get... I don't remember getting any blisters the last time I did the Ohio Beast, so um, I'm not too worried. And I'm wearing my Mud Gear socks. Now, I don't train in these socks. That's how much I trust them. I just wear them in the race. Uh, I do not train in these socks. Um, but they really handle like the wet really well. They turn into basically a second skin. Um, they, they don't chafe me whatsoever. But it's kind of funny how when you're getting ready for an event like this, I mean, everything just has to be just perfect. Like, you have to remember all the different things that you need to do, um, all the different things you need to lubricate. <laughs> because if you forget something, like, you could screw over your race. But um, I'm going to try and take this all one day at a time. I haven't decided yet. I might wear the backpack for the super tomorrow just because I might just want that extra water. Um, but I haven't decided yet, so we'll see, I guess. I'm just, I'm, ex I'm excited, but I'm also anxious, so, excited. <laughs> yeah, socks are good. All right, I feel like I look good, I feel good. Uh, let's, let's see. All right, I'm here. I'm at the festival. I have my stuff. I'm ready to go. It is 8.19. Just enough time for me to eat third breakfast and uh, get my bag checked and go to the bathroom several times. I'm excited. All right, the race is over. Kind of a good news, bad news. Uh, the good news is I did finish. Ta-da! The bad news is I sprained my ankle. There was this really awful um, sandbag carry right around the mile six mark, and it went through this terrible mud, and a ton of people were falling down, and I just stepped wrong in this water pit where you can't see the bottom, and my ankle just went totally sideways. Um, and it feels about as bad as the um, as it did at Gladiator Assault, so that's not a severe sprain. But um, it, uh, I did end up having to go nine additional miles on it to get to the finish because this course is 15 freaking miles long. Um, so the, the race was going okay. It, I was doing well. Um, I did end up failing all three of the obstacles that I've been working on and didn't want to fail all three of them this, day, this time, but I did, I did what I could. So I failed um, Tyro Traverse. That was my first fail because my hands just seized up like they weren't working at all. And then I failed Olympus. I failed 
the multi-rig, which sucks because, okay, I tried all those configurations and I was planning like, okay, what if there's a ring and then two ropes? What if there's this and what if there's that? And I had everything planned out for everything, but I had not planned for three rings, a bar that was really freaking high, and then three ropes in a row. Holy shit. So I had to, first of all, my first attempt to grab the high bar failed because I didn't get high enough. So I really smooth. It looked really good. I, I feel like I impressed somebody out there, but I um, went back to the previous ring, got a bigger pullback, managed to, by the skin of my teeth, get onto the high bar, shuffle along, and then I reached out and grabbed the second rope. So I knew that I would have to transfer to the third rope because the bell was set a bit high and it was too far away for me to just swing on one rope. So I, I went onto the rope, I reached out, grabbed the third rope, got a pullback on that rope, put both hands on the third rope, but then I just couldn't reach where the bell was. Um, so that uh, failure was, I, I gotta say, I, I'm kind of pleased with myself. There are two guys wearing Speedos over there. Okay, anyway, I'm kind of pleased with myself um, that I managed to do so well, even though I still failed it. Uh, that's, that's still an accomplishment. And <laughs> that, that was the hardest rig I've ever seen in any Spartan event, like, by a country mile. Like, that was the craziest rig I've ever seen. So, um, by the end, like, the last mile, um, I, I didn't even want to attempt rolling mud with my ankle being like that. So I didn't do rolling mud, but I just slipped in under the dunk wall. Um, and then the slip wall was right after that, and I was like, no, because I'm, I'm just not gonna... I'm not going to do anything that could, like, rip my ankle out from underneath me like that. So then was rope climb, and I failed it because my grip gloves had no grip. Can you believe that shit? The brand new grip gloves. I was pissed. So, uh, yeah, failed that. And at this point, I had to do the ups because I couldn't get up and down like that. Then I failed the spear, uh, which was right after and I had to do more B-ups, but... So that's five fails today. All the big three, and then a rope climb and spear. And I'm, I'm pretty proud of my clears. I mean, I got monkey bars really early on. I got twister, I got beater. I mean, I was doing really well for grip obstacles, and I was getting over things without too much help, but it didn't last. So, um, I, I am pleased with my performance. I hope I can come back out tomorrow and continue the trifecta. Um, it really depends on what happens with this ankle. So I will do my level best to make sure it gets healed. Um, but in the meantime, I'm gonna go back to the room, uh, go back to the hotel, go back to the room, take a shower, ice bath is going to be critical. So, um, yeah. Pretty crazy day in Ohio. Hey, so I'm gonna play it by ear whether I attempt the super or the sprint tomorrow. Um, if I do attempt the super, I will take it one race at a time. Um, but for now, ice and Doritos. So I'm in really good spirits. Uh, don't feel sorry for me. Um, I didn't get any of the three obstacles that I was trying to get, uh, but I did clear, you know, some good stuff. So we're just going to have to um, wait and see on this uh, ankle here. This is, I mean, it doesn't feel terrible. It feels like, you know, it, it, the initial sprain is about the same severity that I got in Gladiator Assault Challenge. The difference is I had to go nine more miles on some of the gnarliest goddamn terrain I have ever seen in my life. And in Gladiator Assault Challenge, I went one and a half more miles, or possibly less, through terrain that is nothing compared to the Ohio Beast. Like, nothing. Like, if Gladiator Assault Challenge is a mosquito, the Ohio Beast is Godzilla, or Mothra, or something equally horrifying. So. I'm going to eat Doritos. I'm going to ice this thing like a crazy person. 
I'm going to have my leftover Italian food. I'm going to be fine, okay? And if I race tomorrow, I race tomorrow. And if I don't race tomorrow, you know what? I finished a beast. And that's the hardest beast I have ever even heard about um, on such a flat course. Like, I mean, I talked to a dude in the, in the cold wash who did the ultra. And he said, like, that he felt like he did when he finished the Killington Ultra, which is a legendary Spartan course up and down a mountain with tons of elevation gain. And it's notoriously difficult, so... I mean, I didn't do the Ultra, but that was that was for real. Like, there were people... There were so many people... I've never seen so many people in a race who were suffering. Like, I've seen suffering in races before, but these people were, like, miserable. I've seen people who were throwing up in Fort Carson, and it was as hot today as it was in Fort Carson, too. It was, like, 90 degrees. And I just, everybody just seemed so miserable by the end. People were like, this sucks balls. <laughs> so, hey, I finished. I finished. I feel fine, besides the ankle and random, like, aches and pains and mystery, um, mystery scrapes. I feel fine. So, we'll see. We'll see how good it feels tomorrow. Oh, uh, the multi-rig. Oh my god. So this was mile, like, right before mile 13. Uh, and, you know, I've been working on my multi-rig skills. I've been working on my rope skills. But this multi-rig was something out of outer space. Like, I had thought of... I mean, I, I have it written down. I have all these different possibilities for what the configurations will be. I have like rope, ring, rope, ring, rope, 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 ring. I, I have all these different configurations that I had planned what I would do. What I was not anticipating was that there'd be three goddamn ropes in a row after the bar. Yeah, that sucked donkey balls. So I get on the rings it's going beautifully. I look like a freaking god out there. Then I go to make the transfer to the high bar, and it is set very high today. So I actually miss the transfer on the first attempt. I just calmly reach back. I grab the, the ring I just left behind. I get a real big pullback and go for it again. This time I'm like, I get like my fingers like this on it, and I just try to like, uh, uh, and I, I just go for it. I'm like, okay, I just got to go for it. So I quickly match my other hand on and it I managed to stay on the damn thing I shuffle across I get to the very end of the bar as far as I can and I reach out to the second rope and I have the wingspan to grab that second rope and pull back on it pull back on this hand that's still on the bar get a good swing I reach out and grab the next rope that's the last rope before the bell and then I get a big backswing with this. I, I swing back and forth a couple times to make sure that this hand is solid on that rope. And it is. So I swing back. I get as big of a swing as I can because that bell is set about a foot higher. And it is, you know, a few feet away. So I have to get a good swing. I know this or I'm going to fail it. And it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. Like, I just... I don't know if it's because I didn't pull hard enough or because that bell was just that crazy position. I couldn't hit it. And so I dropped down. And people were watching me. Like, it was kind of tragic that people were watching me and they were impressed with how I was handling that multi-rig. And they were waiting to see if my technique was going to work. And then they were disappointed. <laughs> But they, one person was like, I'd count that, I'd count that, but I did the burpees anyway, because it doesn't count. Unless you hit the bell, it doesn't count. But it was a heartbreaker, and it kills me, because I was on those ropes, I was doing freaking great. If only the bell had been, like, at rope level, I would have probably been able to clear that obstacle, but I had to get higher. Okay. Maybe... I'm walking okay. The ankle doesn't feel great, you guys. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I have to go for it. I have to, because I'm crazy. 
Also, my calves, the, the better I can get my calves to feel, the more normal I'm going to be able to walk. So, I'm going to keep massage gunning these until, until I can't anymore. I'll probably bring the massage gun in the car, leave it in the car, do it between races today. But, yeah, I, I just got to go for it. I got to, because I drove all the way here. I have this room. Um, I can't just waste my day thinking about how Wes is going out there and getting a trifecta, so. So, my start time was supposed to be 9.15. Um, it's about 8 a.m. now, uh, so I could still make that start time, but I'm not going to. I'm going to start at 9.45 because that's when Wes starts, and we're going to help each other because he's not feeling great either because I don't think anyone came out of that race feeling great. I mean, you... You would have to have the most bulletproof calves on the planet to not have locked up calves today. My calves normally feel pretty damn good in any situation, but they, whew, man, all that muck that you're trudging through, it's impossible. It's impossible. So yeah, I got get the lower back. The lower back, that was a surprise for me, but it makes sense because your core is working so hard when you're going through mud like that. So, the massage gun is phenomenal. I just freaking love the massage gun. But, yeah, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. So, say a little prayer for me. <laughs> oh my god, that's crazy. This is crazy. This is objectively crazy. Man, I, I highly recommend a massage gun, by the way. Best, best $150-ish dollars I ever spent. So, actually, um, I use a uh, Amazon gift card that my dad gave me for Christmas. So thank you, Dad, for the Amazon gift card that allowed me to get this phenomenal device that can... Luke, I am your father. <laughs> That's good stuff. This is one of my favorite things to do with it, by the way, is right by the armpit. That muscle right below the collarbone on both sides. And then I go on the trapezius. I do this every night. And it keeps my neck from locking up. But I should be okay on obstacles. The obstacles will be easier today. Even that multi-rig is going to be changed to a super rig. So I should be in pretty good shape for today. Oh my god. Oh my god. I feel anxious. I feel anxious. I need to remember to take my Ritalin. I took my first dose. I need to remember to take the second dose after the super. All right, we did it. We did the trifecta weekend. Wes, how you feeling? I'm alive. You're alive. I'm alive. My sprain didn't get any worse uh, because I didn't do burpees today. I modif I changed them to like something else, like squats or like bicycle crunches because I was just like, what were we, team survival mode? <laughs> we're team survival mode today. Um, so... Yeah, that's the best we could do. But lots we had we had some successes. I I cleared one spear, and Wes cleared the rings. Yes, that was good. And right. the monkey bars once. Today. And the monkey bars once today, yeah. which is more than I did. I did them yesterday, but today I was just like, nope. If I fall from this height, I will kill myself. <laughs> I just didn't want to fall. Blisters are are hanging in there by a thread. Oh my god, that's <laughs> even worse than mine. Mine are. I mean, mine are not good, but they're not that bad. But. Anyway, I'm really proud that I woke up this morning and after some deliberation, decided to follow through with the Trivecta weekend. And Wes got his first piece. And that was awesome. And All these medals. First Trivecta weekend. Oh, no, which ones are which? Yeah. <laughs> That's the weekend. Oh my god. Good morning. Um, it is 5.24 a.m. Uh, yeah, my watch is still muddy. I tried to clean it. I tried. I tried my best. I got my venue tank top. Huh? That's great. And you can see all the things are wrong with me. Sunburn. Um, and it kind of ends like right here. Because that's where my headband was. And I have a white where my sunglasses were. Um... 
lots of bruises and scrapes, especially on that elbow because the barbed wire crawl was really um, sandy. It's really kind of a hot mess. Uh, whew. I'm sore. And uh, my feet, my, my ankle feels okay. It feels a little better actually than it did yesterday, so I don't know how, but I'll take it. I feel a little bit like I got hit by a truck, um, but that's normal after an endurance event. Um, but today I have to drive um, pretty far, so uh, hopefully I'll just be able to get out of the car frequently and take breaks and it won't be too bad. I made it home. Oh, I'm so happy. I had a bunch of Snickers bars and Doritos once I got home. Uh, it only took me nine hours and 40 minutes to make that drive, which was kind of a miracle. But um, I'm really, really happy to be home. I already have my shoes hosed out. Oh my god, they just reeked from the swamp. Um, my laundry going. Um, so that's this is good. This was a good weekend. I achieved it. I did a thing that I don't think too many people would want to do. <laughs> I don't know if I could say too many people couldn't do it. Um, you know, maybe not, but I don't think people would try. And I tried something and I set my mind to something and I made it happen. And uh, even though it did not go according to plan, it still happened. So I'll let that be a lesson to my future endeavors. I can pull off some pretty amazing stuff if I just work hard.